Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall first of all take a review of what we have done so far in this course. Right. So first of all, we have studied about operators. We saw how we can relate the operators to the normal functions that we use in real analysis. Then after studying about operators, we have classified and uh, we have also uh, reviewed various results on basic results on operators. We studied about linear operators. We studied about the eigenvalue theory corresponding to operators by relating operators to the matrices. So basically, we have related matrices and operators together because uh, whenever we talk about linear operator that could always be associated with a matrix and we know uh, there is a well known theory which is the eigenvalue theory which is available for every kind of matrices so again we have already seen that this this eigenvalue th uh, theory this could be related to the norm uh, theory for normed spaces which is finite dimensional that means the dimension of that normed space is finite. If that is so, then the eigenvalue theory is nothing but it is the spectral theory only. So you see, the spectral theory has a particular kind whenever we have a finite dimensional normed space and that is the eigenvalue theory. Okay, so next we have also generalized the results for nonlinear operators or the operators in general. So for that, we have studied various terms. One is the spectrum set, one is the resolvent set. Then we have also seen the resolvent operator and so on. So we have defined various uh, various terms so far in this course, right? Next, uh, after having understood what is spectrum and what is resolvent, we have studied spectral theory for bounded linear operators. We saw the spectral mapping theorem. What, what was this theorem? Uh, According to this theorem, suppose we have some polynomial which is the uh, polynomial in terms of operator. Polynomial as an operator. So that polynomial is defined in terms of operator. So that in that case, the spectrum defined for this polynomial would be equal to the polynomial taken over the spectrum of T. So this is the result of this spectral mapping theorem. Then after that, we also studied about spectral radius. So what was that? If you recall, if we take a ball centered at origin and if we take the supremum of all this such that all the spectral value lie within this ball, then that radius is known as the spectral radius. Why? Because all the spectral values corresponding to a particular operator, they are lying inside this particular ball, right? Then we have also studied about Banach algebra and we saw different spectral properties of these Banach algebras. This we have already covered. Next, the next uh, branch of the subject include compact linear operator. Now we have already studied what, what is the definition, how we can relate the operator to be a compact operator. We also have a compactness criteria which is defined in terms of uh, subsequences, right? And then we have defined this concept for total boundedness. And uh, we also saw the compactness for a joint operator, right? Which is uh, basically a kind of inverse operator only, a joint operator. So all we have studied all these things so far in this course. Now the next thing that we, we shall be covering is the spectral properties for these compact linear operators. So in the upcoming videos, we shall be looking at certain results, which I am briefing to you right now in this video. So the first result that we will be going to study later in the videos would be eigenvalues of the compact linear operator. So we will be covering result on eigenvalues of compact linear operators. Then there's a result on composition of compact linear operator with a bounded operator. So we'll see what happens when we compose a compact linear operator with a bounded operator. Is it also compact or what other condition do we require in order for this operator to be compact? So things like that. 
the next uh, and then next we'll be studying about null space of a compact linear operator so accordingly the, there is a result which says that null space for any compact linear operator is always finite dimensional so before studying this uh, concept you should know what is a null space so let me tell you in brief what is a null space if you remember for the uh, simple functions or in vector spaces what is the null space suppose we have a vector space from x to y right and uh, represented by this v then uh, how do we define null space we will say v of x it should be equal to 0 so all those x all those x belonging to capital X such that this thing happens for every uh, for, for the zero lying in this y then we say that or uh, that the set or the space consisting of all those x would be the null space so in this case the similar happens for a compact linear operator suppose we have a compact linear operator from x to y represented by t so if we take t of x and it comes out to be zero for every x not for every x for all the x's which are there in x so all those x would come into another set or another space namely the null space so this would be the null space right so uh, that is very simple so uh, according to the result they would say compact linear operator has a null space which is finite dimensional so this is another result the proof for this result we shall uh, see in the upcoming videos the next result is based on the range space so what is the range space of any compact linear operator so again if we have t from x to y so whatever is tx for any for all the x's belonging to capital x so whatever is tx that would be a part of the range space so according to this result they say the range space of a compact linear operator that is a closed space this is a important result now next uh, what they are doing is they are constructing various null spaces and various range spaces and they are creating a relationship between those null spaces and those range spaces so the next result it says about null spaces they say if we have one compact linear operator defined on some normed space capital x then there would be some smallest integer r which would depend upon lambda obviously what is lambda lambda is given to be the eigen value right so it would depend upon lambda such that whenever uh, the index n is equal to r or it is greater than r then the null spaces would all be equal otherwise they would be contained in each other so now in order to understand this result first of all you should know what is n of t lambda 0 what is n of t lambda 1 you can say what is n of t lambda 2 and so on up to n of t lambda r so if you remember if we have t as some operator from x to x so what would be t lambda this would be operator defined like this t minus lambda i where what is lambda lambda was the corresponding spectral value right uh, sorry it was the corresponding resolvent uh, value right so here this would be your t lambda what would be t lambda 0 it would nothing uh, it would be nothing but the identity operator only what would be t lambda 2 that would be t lambda multiplied by t lambda and uh, we define these t lambdas t lambda r it would be t lambda the operator t lambda multiplied with operator t lambda it is not multiplication it is the composition of two operators right and so on up to uh, t lambda how many times r times in total right so these uh, these are the operators t lambda 0 t lambda 1 t lambda 2 and up to t lambda raised to power r and n of t lambda 0 that is the null space for the identity operator only t lambda 0 n of t lambda 1 is the null space for t lambda 1 and so on so the relationship between all of these null spaces is that they are contained within each other and 
up to a place where we have the index r and above that index r all other null spaces they are equal to each other and that would be equal to this last sub uh, null space right so this is the result in a similar manner we have a result for the range spaces as well so what would be the range space again we would uh, we can define t lambda 0 so the range space for this t lambda 0 that would be uh, just applying this operator t lambda 0 onto all the elements for the space x so this would just form the range space for t lambda 0 again the range space for the operator t lambda 1 it would be t lambda 1 when it is applied onto all the elements of x and again t lambda 2 so that would nothing be but so it would be t lambda composition with t lambda defined onto whole of the space x and we can keep doing this until we reach the last space t lambda x w what is that this is the range space for the operator t lambda q and you already know what is t lambda q this is t lambda composition with t lambda composition with t lambda up to the composition with t lambda how many times x, uh, in, in total q times right and whole of this thing is defined onto whole of the space x so according to this result they say whenever lambda is not equal to 0 then there would again exist the smallest integer q which would depend upon lambda such that whenever we have the index n equal to q from that index onwards all the ranges would be equal and otherwise they would be contained in this range space t lambda not of x so no, now notice that this is the smallest null space and this is the largest range space so you see there's a difference of containment here and after this thing all the range spaces they are equal to each other so combining the results of these two we would now next have uh, the last theorem which would state the result that we have that uh, t from x to x be a compact linear operator on a normed space x where lambda is not equal to 0 then we have n equal to r such that both of these things happen simultaneously that after this index all the null spaces and all the range spaces are equal and moreover we have containment of the null spaces up to this index r we, and we have this containment up to the index r so from these previous two results this q and this r they are exactly the same quantities so this is the result which is stated by this last theorem so all all of these results would be covered in the upcoming videos and we will see in detail the proof for all these uh, results so uh, why we should wait let let us go and start by looking at the proofs for these results well that is it for this video i'll see you in the next videos thank you for watching <laughs>